Hey, what's going on, Scatterbrains? Thank you for coming back to another episode of Scatterbrains. See, my name is Travis, and today let's talk about Monique. Um, Y'all know, like I said, I'm trying to get back on YouTube, make more videos and all of that. So, always looking for an opportunity to make a new video. Traders comes on tonight. Can't wait to watch that. But me and my wife just finished watching the Monique interview on Club Shay Shay with Shannon Sharp. We started it uh, last night, and we watched like an hour and ten minutes of it last night, and then we watched the rest this morning. And um, I got thoughts, so let's talk about it. Um, if you have not watched the episode of Club Shay Shay, it's, it's on YouTube. The episode is two hours and 55 minutes long. It's a very long interview. And if I'm just being honest, the majority of that interview is something we've already heard before. If you followed Monique's story with everything that's happened to her post Precious in, two, in like 2009. Um, I don't really feel like giving a backstory on who Monique is and how we got to this point. Um, just watch the interview or go look it up yourself. But we have grown up watching Monique. I love the Parkers as I did Moesha. Um, I think Monique is a very funny comedian. I think Monique is an amazing actress. Um, whether it's comedically or the drama movie like um, Precious. Now, we ain't watched none of this new stuff. She had that movie, The Reading, that came out on BET Plus, so we don't fool with that in this house. But nobody can deny that Monique is talented. Uh, I think that Monique has gone about the goal that she was trying to meet in the wrong way, though. As a person who is not in Hollywood, who has no connection to Hollywood, who knows nothing about Hollywood, what I can gather just from the various interviews that Monique has done over time about her experience with these Hollywood people, Tyler Perry, Oprah, Lee Daniels, um, Will Packer, Dio, just anybody in Hollywood, all of her issues, I can gather that prior to the movie Precious, Hollywood had a certain kind of way of doing business. Whoopi Goldberg, throw, that, throw her in that list as well. Hollywood had a certain way of doing business that they believe has worked for them, hence all of the years that Hollywood has been around and just the way the cookie crumbs. Like that, they have a way, they have a process. Now, is that process probably beneficial to the talent? Probably not. Is it beneficial to the Moniques of the world? Probably not. But I think Monique was in a really good place when she won her Oscar back in 2009 that she probably could have inflicted the change that she was trying to, you know, make happen. But that's why I say I think she went about it the wrong way. Um, Monique did the movie Precious. It was Lee Daniels movie um, adapted from the book Push. Uh, Monique was only paid fifty some thousand dollars for the movie. And there was an incident where they wanted her to promote the movie outside of the United States. She had promoted it in the, in the United States, but they wanted her to promote it overseas in France. And she declined. There was a whole lot of back and forth between Lionsgate, the production company, Tyler Perry, Oprah, Lee Daniels, all them people to try to get her to come to France to promote. Um, her and her husband asked, was there a dollar amount associated with them wanting, them being the companies wanting her to promote? They said no. She said she wasn't working for free. They said they weren't paying her to promote. With that point first, that is the Hollywood game. This is my conclusion. They don't pay you to promote the movie. All of that is wrapped up in whatever the amount was that you agreed upon to film the movie. Um, I think it's kind of one of those things where it's like, it's just understood. It's not in writing. It may be different now. I assume it's different now, but I think that was the expectation. The expectation is we're going to pay you to, the, to pay you to do this movie. And then we also expect you to promote the movie in whatever capacity that means, because we all know those of us that are old enough that Precious was a big movie. Content of it was horrible, but the, the movie itself was very big. It's a, you know, black trauma. People, that's a whole nother video at another time black trauma sales okay and precious was absolutely that so the movie probably blew up bigger than what they ever anticipated along with the fact that it was originally an independent movie and then it was purchased by Lionsgate and Oprah and Tyler Perry executive producer yada 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 I think what should have happened is Monique's performance was amazing in the in the movie she wins the Oscar and then I think prior to winning the Oscar Monique should have played the game 
because I think that that's what everybody has to do, no matter your career. Every career, every job environment has a game that you have to play. As a teacher, there was a game that I had to play. I had to play anytime I talked to a parent. I had to play anytime I talked to a student. I had to play anytime I had to talk to an administrator. There's a certain game you gotta play in order to get what you wanna get. It would be amazing if we lived in a world where we could be authentically ourselves all of the time and still get the things out of life that we wanted to. There are a few who probably can do that. But for your people who are in these um, careers or jobs where it, it, it was established before you came along and it's just a certain routine that happens, you got to play the game to get where you wanna get. And then I believe once you get on the other side, that is where you you make the change. I think Monique tried to make that change a little too early, too early. I think Monique's heart was definitely in the right place. Um, and she's spoken about, you know, wanting to look out for the people coming up behind her. And I think that that is an honest statement from her. I think that she is trying to look out for the people that came behind her. She's not the first black woman um, celebrity who has had issues or complained or who's wanted to incite change. She's probably the most vocal of our time because she's the person that's still alive that's still talking about it today. So I think her heart was in the right place, but I think she just went about it the wrong way. So that's that on that point. Um, now, her issue with Oprah, as far as Oprah having the show where her brother who molested her when she was younger was going to be on the show. Um, Oprah and her had a conversation about it. Monique said she didn't want to have anything to do with it and that was that but then Monique later finds out that Oprah had her mother on the show um I don't know if there was an obligation for Oprah to tell Monique that her mother and whoever whatever whatever other family members were on there were going to be on the show now while there may not have been an obligation would it have been the right thing to do yes I yes Oprah should have, in, in having the conversation with Monique about, hey, we're thinking about having your brother come on the show to talk about what happened to y'all as children. And we're also going to plan to have your mother and your bro your father, whomever else was on there. I feel like transparency solves a lot of communication issues. Had Oprah expressed her full plan because it was the Oprah Winfrey show, your name is on it. Even if this was an idea that was brought to Oprah by an executive producer or somebody at the end of the day, it's your show. So the moment you found out who was gonna be on the show, because side note, Oprah, it's not like Oprah just shows up to her own show and does not know who the guest is because it has to be researched. She's a journalist, you gotta do your due diligence, you gotta do your research, you know who's gonna be on the show. If you had to, if you felt it was, if it behooved you at that time to check in with Monique about having her brother on the show, that same behoovement, if that's a word, should have came upon you when it came to having her other family members on the show. So I think Monique was, in, was well in her rights to feel a kind of way about the way that Oprah did that. My opinion, of course. When it comes to Tyler Perry, um, she has, she records people's conversations without their knowledge. And I guess, you know, at this point that doesn't really work anymore because now people probably know, just be mindful when you're talking to Monique on the phone or her husband that, hey, they might be recording you. So I think people probably move a little bit differently with her. But there is, on the side, there is no need to record a conversation if everybody is being honest and if everybody is being transparent. That's, that's the black bottom line when it comes to this whole thing. If everybody is honest and if everybody is transparent, you don't have to record anybody. You don't, you don't have to, to lie or just be honest and transparent. That's all it takes. But she has released, I remember this from a couple years ago, she released... Um, a recording she had uh, from Tyler Perry. I don't remember what was said in that one, but in this particular interview she just did with um, Shannon Sharp, she speaks about um, another recording that she says she sent Shannon Sharp prior to their sit down. Now, I don't really think Shannon Sharp listened to the recording. Based off the way he was talking, I don't really think he actually listened to it. Um, and this recording is the same recording she spoke to T.S. Madison about because I saw that interview as well. And in her interview with T.S. Madison, you could tell that T.S. Madison actually did listen to it because based off what they're saying, Tyler Perry admits to something um, within that conversation that was recorded, something to, something to the effect of, um, uh, I'm gonna make it right. 
that's the best way I can summarize it. I'm going to make it right. And he never did. Uh, it was some, something around the time when um, the Boo Medea movie came out, the first one came out, he was supposed to make things right with um, Monique and he did not. Um, but I think at this point, Monique should stop sending the recording to these other celebrities and post it. I don't want to see any more interviews with Monique and a celebrity, a, a, a blogger, a podcaster, with anybody else where she is talking about something I haven't heard myself. The same way she posts the receipts from the issue that she had with D.L. Hughley about that comedy show that made their situation go crazy, post the recording of Tyler Perry. She says in the interview with, with Shannon Sharp, it wasn't illegal. She didn't do anything, anything illegal. If you didn't do anything illegal, post the recording. Let us hear what he said. So then we can form our judgment off of him and his words. Because at this point, we're going off of what you believe he said and going off of Shannon Sharp saying, yeah, he did it, like not really saying it. So I want to hear Tyler Perry say, I lied on you and I was wrong and I'm going to make it right. I want to hear him say that. And those people watching this video, if you've heard him say that in a recording, please direct me to it. Um, you know, it's what it is. Uh, from my understanding, when it came to Precious, because this is what this all boils down to, Tyler Perry was just an executive producer. He wasn't on set, I believe. I believe the movie was already finished shooting. Um, and after it was done, that's when Oprah, Tyler Perry, and Lionsgate got involved. And he labeled, this is based on what she said, he labeled Monique difficult because of her unwillingness to go do the promotion for that thing in France, for that film festival in France. That is where that came from. Um, Tyler Perry is wrong for speaking on her character if he did not have any business dealings with her. He's wrong for that. I can't work as a teacher in a school and a principal from another school tell me I'm not a good teacher because of the things you heard I was doing in the school. And that's the easiest way for me to make it make sense to me. Like that would be wrong for another principal who doesn't even work in my school to tell me that. I also, however, hold Lee Daniels accountable, even though he's since apologized since all of this, for not speaking up. And um, one of the things me and my wife talked about is during the interview with um, Shannon Sharp, Monique talked about how big of a hit financially her family faced from being blackballed with that label of being um, difficult and he asked he being Shannon Sharp asked her what can Tyler Perry do to make it right she just wants him and Oprah just to take accountability for what they did and essentially I believe I gather that she wants him Tyler Perry to compensate her for the money lost she talked about how much money she normally made in a year and how many years this has been. And I think it's completely unrealistic to think that Tyler Perry is going to cut her any kind of check for those years of her not having work. Because while let's say Tyler Perry was the person that started the rumor, let's say he is the root of the tree that told people Monique is difficult. You should not work with her. Let's say that that happened. And I don't know whether they did or not, but let's say it happened. It is still up to the other producers in Hollywood, the other directors in Hollywood, the other script writers in Hollywood, the other executives in Hollywood to make the decision based off this information about whether they were going to work with her. My wife had a good analogy like, you know, when you're applying for a new job, they're going to check your references. If Tyler Perry is one of your references and the weight that Tyler Perry carries, I can understand why an executive or producer or whomever would be like, well, Tyler Perry is a heavyweight, upcoming heavyweight at that time. He says she's difficult to work with. I ain't going to touch it. I can understand why they would do that or to feel like what well, Tyler Perry is telling me not to work with her. And he's also saying that I got some other stuff that I want you to work on. But if you work with her, it's probably not going to happen. And it's really a case of integrity on everybody's part. Integrity of Tyler Perry, those level people saying the bad things that they said, but also on um, the people who they influenced for not doing the right thing. Um, David E. Talbert seems to be one of the people who did not make his um, judgment on whether he was gonna put her in a movie based off of what Tyler Perry said because he put her in the movie Almost Christmas. 
another great movie that she was awesome in. But she talked about how she was supposed to be a cameo and then it turned into a big role. I'm glad it turned into a big role because Almost Christmas was great and Monique was great in Almost Christmas. He did what I believe all those other people should have done and had the opportunity to do was to make the decision for yourself. We have to, I think as people, be honest and transparent. <laughs> be honest and transparent and give people a chance I think that Monique should have had other opportunities there is no reason why Monique gave the performance that she gave in Precious and then we didn't see her and it's all because she said she didn't want to go to work for free and I, and I get that part of the conversation about feeling like I, I shot the movie for way less than what I probably would normally shoot a movie for I don't want to go shoot something for free I get the feeling but I just wish she would have played the game because I can only imagine where Monique would be had she played the game. And that may be a problematic thing to say out loud because it's kind of like, it's kind of like we just take it because that's what everybody else is doing. And I get that, but that's why I feel like in order to get the, the results that you really want, you gotta go about it strategically. And I just don't think she went about it strategically. And everybody can disagree with me on that, but I just don't think she went about it strategically. And I think she probably could have got the results that she wanted. But now she's in a position where she's saying the same thing over and over to a different person. And we were talking about it. Like, at what point do you just let it go? She referenced the universe a whole bunch of times. Like she said, the universe sent her her husband. The universe did this for her. The universe did that. If that's your belief, you believe the universe is the reason that you have everything that you have. Cool. But at what point do you just release all this that you hold on to, to the universe? At what point do you just release it? Release it to the, the same universe they gave you your husband. Release this to the universe. Because we got the story. We can tell the story for you. Until you give us something new, like the recording, or give us some other receipts, you're just saying the same thing over and over again, and it's not changing your situation. Um, My personal opinion, I think everybody wrong. I think everybody has played a part, and everybody has something that they could have done better in each of these situations, each of these interactions. We can't sit here and act like we believe, I'm not gonna sit here and act like I believe that Monique was completely innocent in this whole trajectory of where she is. My food been picked up, praise God, I'm hungry. I'm not gonna sit here and act like she's been innocent, but I'm also not gonna act like we don't understand the weight that the name Oprah and Tyler Perry has on the entertainment field we can't do that so i feel like they all have done something wrong and i think they all should make it right um but i also think that monique is holding out for something that's never gonna happen it would be great to see it happen but you better run sir run down this run down the street sir getting his exercise on i think she's holding out for something that's just not gonna happen i don't think she's ever gonna get the apologies that she wants the way she wants them that's the thing she wants her apologies a certain kind of way. So this is how I look at it. You want the way you fix a problem to be equivalent to the way the problem was started. That's how I kind of look at it. Everything that Tyler Perry said about um, Monique was not in front of us, us being the general public. It wasn't in front of us. So why does the apology need to happen in front of us? The same way he offended you he should match that when it comes to fixing it if it's behind the scenes apologize to her the way that she needs to be apologized to behind the scenes right the wrong behind the scenes this ain't none of our business it's none of our business because at the end of the day these are rich people problems just being honest it's rich people problems Monique talking about making $55,000 per episode for a 22 episode season of the Parkers and feeling that she was undercompensated. By Hollywood standards, you, you may you may have been um, underpaid, but there are people who don't even make $55,000 in a year. When teachers start off, we don't make $55,000 in a year, at least in North Carolina. So yeah, I mean, I, I want more for you, but I don't really care. The average person is not impacted by any of this. We don't care. These are rich people problems and the rich people need to go fix it amongst themselves. It's almost kind of like, will you leave us out of it? Leave us out of it. At this point, I want Monique to leave us out of it unless she is giving us something new that is going to change the narrative and change our thought process. Because at the end of the day, people still watching Tyler Perry shows. People still buy Oprah's magazine. 
people still going to Lee Daniels movies. I mean, even though they made up, but you get what I mean? Like this really hasn't tipped the scale at all. In all the interviews that you've done, it appears that things are just getting worse for you. So at what point do you say, I got a family, I want my situation to be different, so I'm gonna go about this differently. Because doing the same thing and expecting different results is what family, what scatterbrains, is insanity. So it's not to say that her feelings are wrong or that she doesn't have um, the right to feel the way that she feel, but the way she's going, the way she's continued to go about it is not getting the results that she wants. It's, and it's also an in interesting thing that as talented as Monique is, that she hasn't taken, this is from the outside looking in, that it appears she hasn't taken her, her career in her own hands. This is all people need to get what they want to get. There are people who blow up off of social media. All they need is themselves, the talent, and the device. And Monique's resources far extend that. So I just wonder like, why haven't you created the things that you want to be what seemed like you want to be given to you by by these entities you created she is super talented you you created your podcast with your husband y'all have your youtube channel you tell me you can't get a couple people to get some cameras and some lights and to to make something happen she absolutely can imagine what would happen if monique staged her own special stage her own special like i understand that the tyler perry's and the oprah's they have influence but everybody ain't influenced by them you can't go to the bank and get a loan to get equipment to get sound to get lights to get cameras to film your special and then shop it around to different platforms it's not like it's only one platform that exists it's not only netflix you got hulu peacock paramount plus you got all of these different places or Put it on YouTube behind a paywall. Put it on Patreon behind a paywall. I feel like we live in a day and age where there are endless opportunities to make money when you have talent, which Monique absolutely has. And at this point, Hollywood does not want to play with you. Hollywood don't want to. They, they don't care. They still out here making movies and TV shows. What you going to do? I know she got some celebrity friends that still rock with her. And I know she still got some celebrity friends that will still stand publicly with her and do a project. So I feel like at, on some on some ends, I get it. You want these people to do right by you. But at the same time, you can't be a victim the whole time. She talked about how she went all this time without work. Why you why didn't you make your own work? I remember on a Breakfast Club interview, I think Charlamagne might have asked her, why can't you just get it yourself? And she said something about the promoters and I feel like that's an excuse. You are Monique. You are Monique. And you have daddy with you. Y'all can do it on your own and own it 100% and reap those benefits in perpetuity as opposed to you suing Netflix, settling, and then doing a special with Netflix. The same company that you felt like did wrong by you. I'm not built like that. I, I'm not. like if, if I feel like you wronged me, you make it right in court, that's it. I'm not doing a special with you because you've already wronged me once. Of course, I don't know any of the inner workings of any of this, but this is just my regular Travis brain looking at this situation from the outside in. Like, it just don't seem like it's that hard. I feel like Monique was wrong. They should make it right. But Monique needs to move on to something else. She got too much talent just to let it sit and fester and sit on the two hour and 55 minute interview with Shannon Sharp. That's just me. Um... Shannon Sharp, is, he, he's going places with his uh, thing. I'm probably not going to watch any of the episodes no time soon. But, I mean, you know, it, 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 was, it was interesting. Um, but y'all tell me what y'all think. Tell me what y'all think about what I think. You know, I, there's probably more that I probably would have said, but clearly I had been talking a long time without intending to. But, um, yeah, I just, she's talented. And I just want her to do something with the talent other than talk about D.L. Hughley and, and all of that kind of stuff. Because I don't even feel like going going down the whole D.L. Hughley road because it's just, I don't know. Y'all tell me what y'all think. I'm going to just stop right there. Uh, thank y'all for watching this video. Be sure to rate, comment, subscribe. Go ahead and hit the rate button now. Go ahead and hit it right now. All right, go ahead and subscribe if you're not subscribed. And um, I'll be seeing y'all very soon. Peace.